didn't realize it was so sexy. Oh yeah. yeah. This is super sexy. I didn't even get to see it yet. Oh, man, yeah. look at that. Was so what is up guys? Welcome back to the Elk Shape YouTube channel. Today we are gonna do a responsible budget bow build. I think that's what we'll call it. Basically, I don't want to spend a ton of money. This is my backup bow. Dan wanted to give me this bow as a thank you for... Infinite hours of difficult work. <laughs> yes. Like countless. Infinite hours of difficult there you work. Go. <laughs> Dan wanted to give me this bow just as a thank you. It's going to be my backup bow. I feel super spoiled and super blessed to have a, a brand new Matthews V3 as my backup bow. But we're going to lean on MFJJ to get this thing built today. We're going to call it a responsible bow build. I'm going to try to get good components by spending the least amount of money I can. We're going to try to save some money but also have good stuff on here. Let's hop in, build this bow. We're going to do a little shopping with MFJJ and we're actually going to kind of go through the process step by step of how to build a bow. We're gonna do a little shopping. Josh is basically detailing me out on like, hey, well, here's the money we wanna spend things on. Here's the money we don't. Talk to me about, talk to me about that. Trying to do it for the least amount of money possible and it is a backup bow. So we're gonna alleviate the quiver. We're gonna alleviate the stabilizer because he can take those off his other bow without retuning his bow. In order to make your bow function, you have to have a sight, a rest, a peep and a loop everything else can transfer so we're gonna try to not go crazy on those items but we're not gonna be super cheap because if you cut too many corners it won't function well so we're gonna start with trying to pick an arrow rest out and in the price point related arrow rest I would probably look at a trophy taker smackdown pro or a hamski primer now I got a special buy on these old Realtree extra smackdown pros so we're gonna go that route just because it's $30 less than a primer if they were equal which is right here if they were equal on price I'd probably go here but because those are on closeout and they're $30 less, it's going to save us some money. So we're going to go that route. Don't super skimp on your rest because it controls how straight your arrow travels from A to B. Super important. Even, you know, that's half of what a Trinity Hunter Pro is and it'll still do the job, but it's not super cheap. It's not under $100. You start getting into under $100, you're talking about products that are more likely to fail and more likely to wear out in a short period of time. So let's head on over to sites. I want to do single pin backup bow i think that i just want one pin if i'm going to use it like set it set one pin aim up the housing let it rip i have a three pin slider on my other but i shoot top pin 95 percent of the time unless it's out to those crazy distances anyway so i like going single pin again we're gonna not skimp totally in this department i'll let josh tell you the professional stuff in a single pin sight is if you're going to shoot at any distance farther than like 40 or 50 yards you definitely have to have all three axes adjustable and what i mean by that is your first axis is on the rail here so you can actually adjust the rail to the string that's axis one axis two is the level bubble in your housing adjusted to equal what your rail is and axis three is your third axis screw in the side if you have those three axes you can adjust a sight to any plane that your bow is going to shoot no matter if you have a dual cam bow a single cam bow a binary bow a hybrid whatever you want to call it if your string and your riser aren't square you need to be able to adjust the first axis on some of your lesser expensive sites they don't have that adjustment so that part's pretty important so we can't go bargain basement we can't go to the hundred dollar range we're going to probably settle on this ascent verdicts because it's 200 bucks it has all three axes of adjustment and has an adequate amount of drop to be able to still reach out there at 70 80 90 yards if you want to do that it doesn't mean you have to hunt at that distance but the ability to be able to practice and accurately shoot that far is relevant to your ability to be good in the long run but we're not going to go up as high as to like a pro site that's all micro adjusts or micro windage micro elevation you're going to pay another hundred dollars for those features that the average guy is probably not typically using so the ascent verdicts dollar for dollar is very very hard to beat yeah it's 200 bucks and yeah that's not super cheap but at the end of the day if we're transferring a quiver and transferring a stabilizer we're spending a hundred dollars on a rest 200 dollars on a site we're building this boat for 300 bucks that's a pretty reasonable amount of money man a peep in a loop so there's another 20 dollars in there 10 we're going to run with a 19 because that's the most common overall uh, a 10 doesn't uh, do really well up close on the low light conditions. So when you're at that last five minutes of shooting light, a 10 is going to go dim before a 19 is going to go dim. But a 2.9 is so big that when you look at it like 60, 70 yards, it looks like it's this big around and you can't see what you're aiming at. So that's the, really the good combination of both as an option. They do offer light kits for these, but because Tim hunts with places where we can't do electrical, we have to rely on natural light, giving us the light that we can use all the way up until low shooting light. So that's what we're going to settle on is we're going to put a square on here and get it lined up with the bolt hole and get our loop on here so we can get our rest positioned in square. So step one, string loop. Coming's elk, 
or deer. A T-square on here to get me started. And now that I've got it rough, I can put it back in the draw board, check the timing, make sure the wheels are orientated correctly. Then I can put it in the vise and mount my rest on it and get it level in relation to that and make sure everything lines back up. And as long as everything's relatively square to the bolt hole when I'm done with that, I'll leave it as it is and we'll start tuning the bow through paper at that point. And we're not touching there. And that's out of the box from the factory. So we're gonna need to put a twist in this one, probably. Maybe two. We'll try one and see how it looks. There it is a full draw. And I'm hitting just off of the string there. So that's pretty straight. Push side. So just checking how straight these are at full draw. And you are just perfect, man. They must have taken some extra special care with you on this one. Because these are exactly perfect at full draw. This bow will tune really easy. Couldn't have set it more accurately than that if I could have built it and sanded everything. Those are perfectly straight. You got a good one. This is just using a magnet set level to get this setting level so when we start bolting the rest on we can check that all that's level at the same time <laughs> it's pretty epic right all right so we got our rest on and just checking to make sure that we are at a 90 degree angle off of our loop position and that bubble is perfect so i'll be really surprised if we don't get a really good hole right out of the gate here but we're about to find out buddy we'll, first we'll, hole through paper. well i'm optimistic but we'll see let's go like butter, like a big stick of butter. Ooh, that's pretty close. Ooh, look at that, look at that. Ah, I'm gonna have to mess with it a little bit, but very little. It's pretty clean. Knock left if you want to. So we're gonna take the shims that are in here and flip flop them so we can move the cam a little bit that way and increase the lean to hopefully correct that tear. So we're gonna give that a try and see if that works. Bullet hole, so it's time to put the bow back in the vise level it back out and put our side on and get all our axes level, get it square. And then we can put a peep in and appropriately set it to 10. I only have one question. Is this the fastest bow sight I can have on my bow? The fastest bow sight? Yeah, will it make my bow go the fastest? No, <laughs> your sight will not make your bow go fast. Speed kills, mods. boys. If you speed, went to 80% mods, it would go faster. Speed kills, remember that. If there's nothing else I teach you on this channel, it's that speed kills. Yeah, yeah. And also you should never take archery advice from a golf coach. <laughs> setting the uh the scope ring level which is the second axis in this scope to our level here i already got the rail set with my clamp on level so we're pretty close here we should be able to set a peep in here and have tim draw it back and check the orientation and the position and then get this thing shooting down range put this to the crony see what kind of speed we get out of tim's setup with a 480 grain arrow 480 29 inches 70 pounds all I mean, right i guess that's the same as my other one it's 289 uh it's five it's five feet of set okay. five pounds lighter so, so it's I'm probably more like 282 i bet you it's more like uh 277. that's a sweet spot all right for reals this time 282 you were right, sir. Yeah, it was. Yeah, good guesser, man. Now we're gonna grab the black gold sight tape kits and put a 282 sight tape on there to start with to give you a good guideline of what your drop's gonna look like. We're gonna throw another one. We're here. 281. Previous one was 282. Nice. Five yards. In the hopper. Fast for that heavy up there. 480. Okay, we're gonna target two. Yep. Okay. So we need to go up a ways on the hip. Kind of out here, typically, at this distance. Dude, why is this bow hold so steady? It's, <laughs> is that like the grass is green on the other side kind of deal? Well, you know, yeah. Because it like, seems like it's holding It's like the fresh girlfriend. Oh, uh, yeah. Fresh yeah. girlfriend. It's like, ooh, cool. She's just great. She's kind of nice. Part of this advanced forward design like that is it actually feels like it's got a stabilizer on it when it doesn't. Here you don't want to run a Micro Hades Pro in 150 grain? I might. I could. I certainly yeah. want to test them. They're worth testing. Ooh, she's hot. Now <laughs> <laughs> pointing a dot at five yards makes it look like that's moving. I was like, oh man, man that sucker don't move, ooh, dude. That, I'm like, ooh, dog. All right, so we're running out of up and down adjustment there, so I'm probably gonna have to drop your chassis. Yeah, we're gonna have to do it. Once in a while, when you go to build one of these and set it up, you will not be able to move your scope head up enough. As you can see, there's an up and down adjustment here. We've maxed it out. So you can actually move the whole assembly up. So we're going to show you what that looks like real quick. Now, granted, you will have to readjust the rail and set it level again to make sure it's right. Pop that out. That one right there. In between this adjustment and little known fact, in fact, we should probably show this. There's also a left to right adjustment in this base 
Since I've got it apart, I might as well show it to you. You can actually move this left and right, and there's two sets of screws in here too. So you can move this farther and farther over left or back more right. So this really has enough adjustment to fit on just about any damn bow out there. Most people don't know those are under there. So hot little tip for you. Hot tip. Hot tip. And then we gotta check the level again. Yep. So we don't have to check the second axis because this is your first axis adjustment and this is the only thing we've moved. So I just gotta put it in the level real quick and set that. Should just take a second. Because of the rail. So we clamp on a little Hamski Gen 2 level and our rail's no longer level because we loosened the screws and moved it, rightfully so. Do that and then reset it. Make sure that's on there good because that was good. And on the oh, Matthew sent me this. Thank you, Matthew. Send a hat. It saves a little bit on the old budgeto budget, and uh, it's gonna go on the bow because that's the uh, that, that is that. the right price on a quiver. Josh cool. also thinks it's a pretty good quiver. Free, well. uh, free never hurts, but these are actually a really nice quiver. They're super easy to get off. You don't have to flip a lever or anything when you're trying to remove it. Like a lot of one piece quivers, you have to grab something and open it and then slide it off. This is just a rotation. So you just pop the top in, push the bottom till it stops, and it's on. And it's on like really firm. Like you're not gonna snag this and take it off. It's on there like yeah. good. Which I like because I guess the the only complaint with that is you can get some vibration because some of the arrows hanging out the bottom. Yeah, you got you know an extra 24 inches arrow hanging down here. Your arrows are gonna move a little more when you fire it. But the way this rubber gap sits in here, your arrows don't actually hit each other. So it should be quiet. It's just gonna move a little. Don't let it alarm you. In general, this quiver is really sweet and it's super tight to the bow if you can see that. Like you couldn't put that in any closer without hitting your limb. So it will keep it nice and low profile, which will help with the balance. You shouldn't need very much side weight to keep this bow level. It's almost like the manufacturer made it for that bow. It's almost like they planned it. Kind of funny how that works, right? Trophy taker, fall away rest. Smackdown Pro. Trophy taker, Smackdown Pro rest. Black gold. Ascent Vertex, single Ascent pin. Ascent Vertex, single pin. Sighted it in, got our sight tapes, started to dope. I just gotta go through the process again with this bow. Sight in the third, we'll get it all ready to go, but we just wanted to kind of give you an overview of what we got so far. Matthew's Arrow Web. HD. I'll probably throw some stabilizers on here. I think we might have some fancy ones coming that have something Maybe. to do with, yeah, Dr. Evil over there. I just wanna say thank you to Matthews and Dan for, for supporting me and sending me this bow. It's really cool to have a backup bow. I honestly feel spoiled, but if something does go wrong on a, on a Western hunt, I got it. Potentially gonna be my tree stand bow as well. Appreciate you guys for being a part of this channel. We make this stuff in the name of hard work and hopefully you guys can feel that and appreciate that we put our effort into this channel. Subscribe if you're not already. Give the video a thumbs up. That stuff actually really helps. MFJJ has Podium Archer YouTube, podiumarcher.com. Check him out if you need archery things. Oh yeah, go shoot your bows. We'll catch y'all back here for the next one. Turn it off and go shoot your bow. <laughs> go shoot your bows. <laughs>